Coming up, Wingard Wearables drops another item, and this time it's a knife. Uh, Off Grid Knives comes out with the perfect Bowie. And we take a look at my Civivi and Sencut collection. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Doug Bowell, B-O-A-L, 7620. He had a great comment. He said, Bob, a little trivia. According to some traditions, when the 10 to 12 inch 1830s or 1840s Bowie or Bowie was used for self-defense, they were usually held edge up when the person was involved in a knife confrontation. There were blast, uh, brass strips attached to the spine of some knives. Uh, this was not to catch the opponent's blade, and uh, which is something I have um, speculated before, uh, because it's a softer material that it would catch the the blade if uh, if the if the edge bit in. But he says uh, they were. Uh, it was not to uh, catch the knives of the opponent, but to snap strikes on the bony protrusions of the hand, wrist, forearm, etc., to disarm the opponent. Uh, the opponent. The opponent's blade was almost impossible to grab, and the forehead was a regular target, causing a laceration wound, blood flowing into the eyes, and probably not lethal. Okay, so some interesting things here. First of all, that very last point with uh, hitting the forehead in a knife fight uh, is something that uh, the great and powerful Lynn Thompson has brought up many times with the Americanized Tonto and its secondary point right up at the tip. He's saying if you flick that, kind of like you would a drumstick, keeping it loose in your hands, flick it, and hit the uh, forehead of your opponent, uh, it doesn't do much damage to the opponent, but lots of blood from that area. Uh, you know, you see a boxer get uh, get their eyebrow split. Lots of blood comes out of there, and it can blind them, making you uh, making uh, giving you an advantage. But the other thing I find interesting is that really what we're talking about is the spine of the Bowie or the Bowie blade, and how some of them had a uh, a brass strip here. Uh, and and um, Doug Bowl is saying it's for it's for defanging the snake, hitting the hands, hitting the forearms, breaking the fingers with your blade so that they drop the knife. Uh, but I'm wondering why you would need a brass strip to do that. You can just use the spine of the blade um, or even the edge of the blade to accomplish all of that. So um, I love this comment. A little bit of mystery uh, still in the in the Bowie knife fighting thing. I hear a lot of different things, but I uh, something I hear consistently is edge up. And a lot of times it was like in the in the U.S. military in World War II, it was thrust in and heave up, you know, with that edge on top and doing horrible things to your opponent very quickly. Um, so, yeah, the Bowie knife. Uh, a great and storied knife from the United States that uh, has a great past. And, you know, we're still trying to hack through some of that. So thank you very much, Doug Bowl, uh 7620 for your comment. I loved it. And uh, everyone else who watched and commented this past, past week is greatly appreciated. Okay, that long winded way of saying now it's time for a pocket check. In the front right pocket, which is what we usually highlight the most, today I had uh, another historically uh, anchored blade. Uh, this is the Night Horse uh, by Asymmetrical. That's um, that's the mid-tier uh, company from Beyond EDC. Uh, Beyond EDC is awesome company um, made of people who came from uh, various other great companies over there in uh, China, David Cam heading it up. He used to work for Kaiser, and you can see it in these productions. They're beautiful. This one is a Dirk Pinkerton design. It's his modernized take on the Spanish Navaja folding knife that was uh, generally tended to be quite large and had a ratchet, a ratchet um, uh, lock on the back and was used for fighting when Spaniards were no longer allowed to carry swords. I like the resourceful spirit of the Spaniards. We can't carry swords. That doesn't mean we're going to stop fighting and defending our honor. We'll just do it differently. Uh, I've always loved the horn-shaped handle of the Navaja and that 
Spanish clip point. And when I say Spanish clip point, what I mean, and I'm not sure if this is official, but a Spanish clip point, look at Miguel Bar Barbudo on Instagram. He's a Spanish knife maker making some of the most incredible traditional Spanish knives. But a Spanish clip point oftentimes has a long, flat clip, um, much like this one. And the belly protrudes down from the tang um, widening out at the at the apex of the belly and then coming up to that uh, supremely pointed tip. I, I love it. I love how Dirk interpreted that classic design, made it modern. He's definitely in my uh, top five pantheon of great knife designers. And this knife and its $30 cousin, this knife is $115 right now for S35VN and titanium on Smoky Mountain Knife Works, the only place you'll buy this knife. Uh, it's an exclusive there. And if this is too rich for your blood, you can get a $30 version of it with 14C28N and Contour G10. That is exquisite. I don't know how they do it. Well, maybe I know how they do it, but man alive, do they do it. And uh, what a great knife. So if you have uh, the druthers and the opportunity, I'd say go to Smoky Mountain Knife Works and get yourself a night horse, no matter what the flavor. Okay, um, slip joint in my pocket today uh, was a big clip point riding in this beautiful sumptuous leather sheath made by kevin duty of duty's daggers uh, i've had i have three um slips from him now he does some awesome stuff cool guy too uh this is the lake champlain barlow from c reisner cutlery and uh it is it is um austin jackson's latest design himself he does a lot of exclusives over there traditional pocket knives for instance he's got uh, two um, exclusives of the QSP Hedgehog. Great, great slip joint knife. He's got his Ohio River Jack in the many uh, six different flavors that comes in, I believe. And then this one, which I'm going to open and close in front of the mic because it's got such tremendous walk and talk. So, you know, recently I've been in a, another slip joint phase. And during this slip joint phase, I've learned something new. I believe that every phase in and out of a hobby. I've, I phase in and out of hobbies. I phase in and out of my martial arts training. And um, <laughs> so my justification for that behavior uh, is that when you come back to something, you've learned something, especially when you've been away, sort of like absence makes the heart grow fonder. And uh, so that's my justification. Of course, if I had been training solidly for 40 years as a martial artist without taking a year off here or six months there, I'd be an incredible badass. However, I am not uh, because I have taken breaks. What I learned on this break from slip joints coming back is that a real modern slip joint, the difference, the main difference between a modern slip joint and a traditional slip joint is this. I would call um, <clears throat> it's this right here. Let's get in there. Do you see that right where my thumb is? That is a stop pin down there in the blade well. A stop pin, just like any modern uh, folder has a stop pin. When this closes, it stops at the stop pin. Ooh, this has got such great walk and talk. So that, that little sharpening notch there lands right in there in that uh, on that pin, and it doesn't go any further. So what you're doing is you're avoiding blade wrap. Blade wrap comes in a more traditional slip joint knife where this part right here, the, it's called the kick of the Ricasso, is uh, ground to a certain height so that when snapped back in, it doesn't over the blade doesn't overextend and hit the liner, causing blade wrap. Um, so uh, Jack Wolf Knives, for instance, does it the old-fashioned way, where, where, where they use a kick to stop the blade. It's got a slightly more traditional feel um, and sound. Um, is it better or worse? No or no and no, but it's just different. And these new uh, sort of modern traditional slip joints uh, where they where they pop the um, lock bar in there or the uh, the stop pin in there work great. And uh, you really you, you you have no there's no danger of blade wrap. One might argue as a purist, which I am not, but one might argue that designing a slip joint with a stop pin is not actually designing a slip joint, that you need to consider the kick and and the recoil and all that stuff, which uh, I applaud you if you do, for instance, Ben. Uh, if you don't, 
hey, you're you're uh, being Rembrandt in the modern age. You're taking advantage of the tools you have at your behest. Uh, I like to say that if uh, Rembrandt were alive today, he'd be using AI. He'd be using computers and film and uh, digital this and that because he was an artist seeking the best way to express himself. Uh, if you consider a knife designer's artist, which they are not, uh, they're they're trying to express their idea as best they can. Okay. Wow. Uh, that was like a homily. All right. Next up, I had on me, because auxiliary manufacturing has been on my mind, and you'll see why shortly, uh, I've been carrying the pocket rocket. I carried this today. This is such a great knife, and it's a great appendix carry, even though it's totally straight. From stem to stern, it is 100% a straight knife. Um, and usually I consider something with a curve a little better to, to accommodate my curves uh, when I'm wearing appendix fixed blade, when I'm carrying an appendix. And that uh, is the spirit in which uh, the Wingard wearables new knife, for instance, was designed. And we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, but this one is just short enough at about six inches and it's got a three inch blade. That's about six and a half inches, three and a half inch blade uh, or a three inch blade, three and a half inch to four inch handle. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't measured it. Uh, but faceted handle works great and nestles very nicely in the fold between, you know, that that ang that 45 degree angle between my belly and my hip and my leg and all that, that area right up front and fits perfectly and is great for just a quick grab because the way this handle is set up, it's got these notches here and... Uh, the thumbs, the thumb and the forefinger really grab that thing easily and quickly, and you can bring it to bear without any delay. So I love my auxiliary manufacturing pocket rocket. I would love to get a couple of others. He makes some really sweet blades, and actually he's loaned one out to me and a number of other knife people to show off a, a new something he's got coming out, but we'll show that off in a minute. Okay. Last up on me for emotional support, my ESK, my emotional support knife today, was the Scorpio from Orion Knives. The Scorpio by David Cam and Orion Knives is such a cool little knife. Great little clip point with an aggressive uh, profile, jimping on the clip, which is great for indexing engaging cut depth and and that kind of thing especially when when going into a uh, box or something like that you don't want to cut any deeper than that lock your finger into that jimping and go to town uh i this might not be a popular way of looking at it but i think personally that david cam was one of the pioneers of the flipper button lock button lock flipper because uh this this and the orion um solstice were knives that were especially the latter were knives that were out before flipper uh, button locks were all the rage and totally you know apropos and he did it great and a lot of that is the is the geometry here putting that flipper uh far forward of the pivot uh, really makes this thing uh just jump out of the handle. Uh, like most great small knives, in my opinion, that's my opinion, uh, it's nice and thick. I like a full width on a small knife. Think of the Baby Rhino from Off Grid. Um, think of the, the Mini Pelican from QSP. If you maintain the width of the regular size knife into that mini uh, version, you'll have something great uh, in hand that, that really locks in it's not it's not small on all dimensions you're not trying to manage it on all dimensions so i love this for the action i love this for the performance and uh yeah i love it for the design so that's the orion scorpion so today on me i had the night horse by uh, asymmetrical design i mean asymmetrical and um dirk pinkerton i had the uh, lake champlain barlow from c reisner cutlery i had the three inch pocket rocket dagger from auxiliary manufacturing that's michael jarvis and i had david cam's orion knives scorpion on me do let me know what you were carrying today i love hearing what people are carrying that's one of my favorite parts 
of Thursday Night Knives, by the way. Check it out tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. But one of the things I really love about that show is uh, getting in live um, in real time uh, everything that everyone was was carrying once we do a pocket check and everyone starts chiming in. It's great to hear. And I always get ideas about ways I could spend my money and be an even better cutter out there. All right. Uh, that being said, I think it's time that we uh, head on over to some uh, knife news, uh, some knife life news. And uh, as we do so, I just want to remind you that if you want to help support the show, you can do so on Patreon. Quickest way to do that is to go over to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, or you can scan that handy QR code that Jim has placed on the screen. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Iron River from Bark River Knives. This three inch bladed Magna Cut Beauty is a Knives Ship Free exclusive. From Spyderco, the Native Chief Lightweight features a black DLC blade finish with blacked out hardware, finger choil, and textured scales for added grip, and lightweight linerless construction with fiberglass reinforced nylon scales. And the Osprey 9 Adventure Kitchen Knife from RMJ Tactical is designed to slice and dice through food prep while being capable of withstanding the outdoor elements. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time, theknifejunkie.com slash free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. What is actually my problem? I can't watch those knife ship free knives ship free ads without like oh i need that and i need the native five blackout and i need i need them all my god what is my problem that that new uh, uh bark river knife and tool looks really sweet um and then i didn't know rmj was making chef's knives i'm always the last to know you know youngest one last to know last born last to know all right, uh, let's get into knife life news. That's a little bit of a uh, little, little bit of personal family stuff there, <clears throat> that which I didn't mean to bring into the show. The Civivi Propagnator, a name that just rolls off the tongue. The Civivi Propagnator, uh, a new knife, fixed blade knife that actually uh, I might be making fun of the name, but I really would love to have this one. Uh, this is by PG Knives, uh, Piotr Goshniak. Now, okay. Uh, Polish, the Polish language is beautiful. Uh, I used to watch uh, Krzysztof Kieslowski movies when I was an artsy fartsy type. And uh, man, uh, the, the, the language, uh, Polish language, especially spoken by a beautiful woman, is an incredible language. But when I see it written down, man, I run for the hills because I don't know if I can pronounce it. Um, but anyway, this new Civivi is a really uh, good looking knife, as you can tell. Uh, by PG Knives. PG Knives I've been following uh, for years on Instagram. It's really nice to see uh, companies that I've been following break through, um, if for no other reason than I knew they were worth following. Uh, but I really like this design. Uh, similar to his custom Defender model, uh, it's a reverse Tonto. And I might add, it's a reverse Tonto in two ways. Uh, reverse in that uh, the general reverse Tonto way, uh, basically. Um, you know, at the tip, it's sort of like a worn cliff. Ergo, uh, we'll call it a reverse tanto. You know, I've always bristled at that term, but it's also a, rever a reverse tanto in that uh, a an Americanized tanto has two very distinct edges: uh, the main cutting edge and then that forward edge right here. Well, the propagator has taken that and reversed it, so now the short bit is the main part <laughs> the short bit of the blade is what comes straight off the ricasso and then the longer part the longer secondary edge is the one that ends at the tip i think it's beautiful i gotta say um i i do uh, when i'm looking at the ultim though when ultim has too much light coming through it yes it does look like urine not that i'm not that that's a jit the turn off necessarily uh but i've heard people say that uh ultim looks like urine and uh, in this case it kind of does but again not necessarily a negative but that's for a different kind of show i i personally would go for the black and green model up top 
what I do know is that I would like to get this because uh, as we're talking about today, as you know, um, this is a Civivi Sen Cut and by extension, we show. However, I have no we branded knives. I have a few we OEM'd knives in here from from days gone by. But uh, I, I really like the look of this. I love what we, uh, uh, especially Civivi and Sencut, are doing, especially with these designs that take a chance. You know, that's the beauty of a Civivi. That's the beauty of a Sencut or a CJRB or a budget line coming from a premium uh, company is that they can take chances and do these crazy blade designs that may may hit or may not. Uh, this one to me looks like it's going to hit on all cylinders because I think people love a compound grind. People like a reverse Tonto and uh, and people like the um, uh, the versatility of having a low tip blade where they can uh, use it in self-defense, but they could also use it for utility. This is coming out later in December. We are now in December, and it will have G10. Uh, as you saw, that black G10, it'll have micarta or ultim scales, aka urine scales. Uh, check it out. I love ultim uh, a bit, um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Next off, let's stop talking about that, and let's talk about real steel. Now, when Real Steel came out, they came out, uh, this is just a, uh, anecdotally, they came out right after that goofy movie about robot fighting came out called Real Steel with um, the triple threat. What's his name? Uh, Wolverine. And uh, I always thought that was a goofy name for what looked like a goofy movie, but it seems to have uh, picked up a cult uh, a cult following. Anyway, uh, Real Steel has come out with the bullet this is from Torby Designs, and I've been following. Uh, this is another uh, Polish maker whose full name I, I I'm not even going to try and butcher. But uh, Torby Designs uh, makes some really cool knives. I've been following him on Instagram for a long time too, and he's done a few collaborations already uh, already with this uh, with the Civivi and Wee family. But now he's got one here with Real Steel. Very limited production. Very. Look at this thing. I can see why. Now, one of the things about uh, Torby Designs that sort of signature is the stacked and sort of terraced handles. So you'll get handles made of different materials or the same materials, but stacked in such a way that with each successive layer, you get a little less and a little less, and it gives you that terraced contoured feel. This thing, I mean, I'm just looking at it. Not a knife I want or need, but it is beautiful. Uh, in my opinion, that is a beautiful Tonto. Uh, it's it's taking what is obviously an American Tonto, uh, drop point Tonto um, profile and really mm, uh, riffing on it. With, you've got a beautiful fuller. You've got an opening hole. You've got a big uh, choil there. If choils are what your thing, uh, if choils are your thing, especially on a 2.1, uh, 2.91 inch, three inch blade to me that's a little short to have a choil but that's just my opinion a very comfortable looking handle angular as it is and on this very 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 extremely limited edition that we're looking at and the reason i say that three pieces they made three of them three of them uh and they didn't make it with something uh mined off of jupiter either uh this is just s35 vn and uh but it's that handle with the complex stacking and the brass damascus that's why they only made three of them i'm guessing brass damascus must be quite a quite a material to manufacture they only could muster up three of them uh but you can get a standard production model uh coming out soon now i don't know what that's going to look like but no doubt it's not going to look like that because they only made three of that. Um, pretty cool. Real Steel, I'm hot and cold with Real Steel, uh, but I have one here uh, that's going to be given away eventually uh, that Dave of This Old Sword gave the channel a while ago. H5, I think it's called. What a cool, cool knife. It was the very first one they came out with. They are no doubt a, a very good company. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they have another one coming out. This is the 2600 Delta. Doesn't that sound like a cool and kind of official name? 2600 Delta. 
Uh, this one is capable of speaking multiple languages and infiltrating cultures very much unlike itself so that it can take down governments. Uh, the 2600 Delta is a Poltergeist Works um, collaboration or design. Now, um, uh, this is another gentleman whose name, I'm just going to say Martin W., uh, of Poltergeist Works. I, I cannot pronounce his name and I've never heard anyone say his name. So, but I've been following Poltergeist Works for years and uh, our good friend over there at uh, at Luck Knives, I know he's got a few of them. Mike has a few uh, custom Poltergeist Works. To me, they are just really beautiful. They are a, such a beautiful expression of modern folding uh, knifeage. And he's done a lot of uh, production collaborations which is great especially with real steel because that means regular schnooks like you and me can own a design like this and uh, i really think it's cool uh this is a production adaptation of an of a custom it's 2.9 inches of s35 vn <clears throat> great new steel you may have heard of just kidding not to be a snob but it's always kind of funny when a, a new and premium thing comes out in S35 now. Sculpted titanium clip carbon fiber. You can see that fat carbon fiber or micarta inlays. I'd love to see that with the micarta inlays. I, I do like fat carbon, but I feel at this point it's for the younger generation. You know, I'm 52 years old. What do I need with uh, a material, handle material as frivolous and sort of a, a jocular as that? Not I. Give me some stolid uh, micarta that I know is going to grip my hand when it gets bloody. Um, <clears throat> these are available now. So if you like real steel and if you like Poltergeist Works, do go check that out. I, all joking aside, I love... Uh, here's a signature thing about, um, about Poltergeist Works. You see the pivot and you see the... Um, well, the, the big chunky uh, connector at the tail end where maybe the lanyard tube would be uh that is a, a signature style of uh of them and i think those originally come from bicycle chains somehow uh let me know in the comments below i read that years ago i i seem to maintain what i read but unlike someone who's like really smart i don't maintain it in proper boxes i like remember stuff and then i file it away I've, like i do in this room here i just like it's over there on the weight bench. I know where it is. Uh, and so that's what I got from, from that. But tell me about those Poltergeist, Poltergeist Works uh, pivots and connectors. I think they're the same. And I think they come from like motorcycle chains or something originally. Let me know. All right. Last up here. This one is going to roll right off the tongue. Can't wait for this. The Kaiser Metapropozole. Metapropozole. Uh, this is a new fixed blade knife, which I don't like the looks of, honestly. But that that's neither here nor there. It's coming from Kaiser, so it's going to be a great production. And um, if you like the looks of this, man, go for it because it's a Kaiser. Uh, this is the uh, this is from Alikanov Adil. Alikanov Adil. That's what I'm going with. He's a Russian designer, brand new, inspired by military fixed blades, but also a little bit of blade uh, bushcraft thrown in there maybe you can see that in the tip uh it's a, a whimsical design uh, a little too whimsical if you ask me uh that's 5.6 inches of d2 and uh it's a 9.56 ounce knife with kydex uh, available soon so not not exactly super light but i'll tell you one thing i do like about it uh i i, I like to add a little positive to things like the Metapropdizol. First of all, it's a Kaiser, like I said before. So you know it's going to be built beautifully if you like it. It's got that Kydex sheath with the with the with the clip you can reorient and all that. But what I do like it uh, about it, Jim, if you could go to the other shot of it uh, with the profile, I like where the thumb ramp meets the blade because it gives you behind it. It gives you that ability to to push up against the thumb ramp. And then in front of it, which you don't see on this knife, but on, in front of it, you see that grab position where you can put your thumb up on the blade and then pull back on the handle, which has that ramp going yeah, with that nice little convex surface. To me, I, I love that. You see that on the SOCOM Elite. You see that on the SOCOMs 
And uh, I really love the way that works. So I have a feeling on this knife that is going to come into play when you're using it. So it might not win any beauty contests in my mind, but it looks ergonomic as all hell. All right. I've spent too long on Knife Life News. Let us get, please, to the state of the collection. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I got it. I got it in hand. It is strange. It is cool. I have not quite exactly figured out this knife for me, but this is the Wingard Wearables Love Handle. And Wingard Wearables, uh, as you know, is known for their contoured weapons. Here, uh, I'm going to put that under the knife cam. I'll show you this super quick. I know you know what this is, but this is the Wingard Wearables Back Ripper Tomahawk, meant to be EDC'd. That's why the curve it fits on your hip the um haft goes down your leg inside your pants theoretically and you carry it around all day with comfort i know zach wingard does for me it hasn't worked quite into my edc that way but i love this just as a thing in and of itself uh, that i don't need to edc but that i keep on my desk to thwart any attackers uh, you know if all the other things don't work uh, but so wingard wearables whose entire mission is making uh, EDC weapons and tools that fit the body. <laughs> I know they were laboring. Um, Zach Wingard was laboring over this design for a long time. How do we make a knife that fits the Wingard wearables um, USP? Well, they managed to do so right here. And um, knife maker, uh, a knife maker in Arizona that goes by the Norman Tactical on Instagram. I'm sorry, I've... I'm spacing on his name at the moment, but the Norman Tactical, I've been following him for years on Instagram, makes these really cool uh, fixed blade knives, mostly EDC, many of them based on historical designs. And they are beautiful, beautiful knives. I've, I've admired his work for a long time, so I was really excited to hear that Zach teamed up with this gentleman uh, to make to make the love handle. Now, let me let me show you what the love handle is based on. How is this supposed to be carried? Okay, so you can see the curved sheath here, and you can see the, the two discrete carry concept clips at an angle held in with Ranger, Ranger uh, bands. So how this is, I'm gonna go to the main camera here, and I'm probably not tall enough for this, but how this is supposed to fit, this is supposed to go in the waistband like this. And that curve, that curve is supposed to accommodate the tummy and sit right below the, the belly. And, and then you've got a knife in your waistband that is seven inches long, curved, capable, and uh, nestled right under your belly. The, there's one problem with this knife for me personally, and that is that it's too long for me personally. Uh, my body uh, curves. I don't have much of a belly um, coming out this way. So my curve is this way. Um, I am, I am, however thin I am this way, and my body curves. Um, so I could see how someone a little bit larger than I am, and I, I haven't met um, Zach in person, but I think he's a, he's a tall gentleman. I, this fits him perfectly. This would fit most people I know perfectly. Maybe I'm a little more slender. Um, and I don't, I'm not saying that in any sort of braggadocious way. I kind of wish I had a little more bulk, a little more muscle. Uh, but, uh, so this knife for me, how this fits me is different from it, how it's going to fit you. By the way, this knife is wicked. It's like a scimitar. You will just, you will do a lot with this knife. Uh, but so for me, um, taking this clip off and reorienting it and putting it in the waistband here makes more sense for me. I'm going to do a close-up video where I show off uh, the, uh, the originally intended uh, way of carry and then how it makes sense for me and maybe different body types. <clears throat> but the, the whole point, the whole through line here is the curve. The curve on the sheath, the curve on the blade, and uh, how it's supposed to fit your body. 
Let's talk about this handle for a second. This is paper micarta, and it's got grooves. It's got what? Argo, Tito, Burrito, Davies, DeMarco. It's got these two grooves on either side, and uh, they really lock into the hand. I even like it held like this, uh, kind of reverse with the edge up for a pecking tip kind of thing. A nasty you could do nastiness with that and then if you do that thrust in the heave ho like we were talking about before uh it could be a very very effective weapon uh this paper micarta is hand grooved by the great and powerful zach wingard himself and uh these uh the first run of them has been sold out but another um another run is going to be made or, or is in the works now this is on loan from the maker thank you so much zach for letting me check out this beautiful knife very unique and uh it's an honor to have it here next up uh from um off-grid knives yes yes they finally did it the stinger one of their most popular knives is now out in an edc this edc version is something else here let's go let's go to this main camera here Let's go wide to this camera. Um, the Stinger is originally a very large knife, a four inch a bayonet ground, um, nearly dagger, uh, dagger ground blade here. People loved it. I myself loved it. It 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 was a, a turning point for off grid knives in that they contoured the handles and all that. Great knife, but a lot a lot too big for a lot of people. So um, listening to the crowd and what they want, Carrie of Off Grid Knives uh, made a small three inch version. This is a four inch bladed version. This is a three inch. He took it down a whole inch and made this awesome um drop point version it's not a dagger point like before and it's also fully flat ground so this thing is a slicer all day long you've got jimping halfway up the blade so as far as i can extend my thumb uh, i have jimping and it's coming in these two flavors uh, currently the coyote and the all black so really really psyched that they uh came out with an edc version of the stinger i love the stinger Probably still my uh, probably still my favorite of the two because of its size, but this thing I've been carrying these around uh, nonstop since I got them about a week ago, and they're great, great little knives. And like uh, little knives that I like, you know, I consider three inches a three inch blade a little knife. It still maintains a thickness in the handle, so that uh, when you're using it, you could use it very hard and not lose control. So that's the off-grid Stinger EDC. Nicely done, Carrie. Next up, also from Carrie Orifice and off-grid knives, this one takes the cake. Uh, I always loved the Cayman EDC. And then they came out with a Cayman Large 4-inch version. I love this. That, that clip point blade that looks like a crocodile, a Cayman, if you will. Well, he did the right thing. And came out with a fixed blade Bowie version. Look at that. Look at that beautiful Bowie blade. I'm going to flex. I'm going to go back and forth. This buoy here is not your 10 inch quarter, uh, 10 inch long, quarter inch thick traditional buoy. Uh, this is a seven inch and about uh, eighth of an inch thick, uh, I'm guessing. Uh, D2. And it comes in three different flavors. Um, it comes in this uh, all black version. It comes in the dramatic black and stone wash version. And then in the very aesthetically pleasing coyote version with the gray and that handle. Now, I'm going to bring this over to the main camera just because you, you need to see how cool this thing looks. Sometimes you got to see a Bowie like this when someone's holding it up kind of in front and uh i i'm thinking that this is just a stupendous looking knife here let's bring it back under here uh maybe you can see it better um i like how that clip how the swedge 
uh, extends up beyond the main contour of the spine. You got that curve there. You've got jimping as the day is long, coming far beyond what I could. Well, I guess I can reach the very tip of it. And then this incredible full tang contoured handle is just awesome. And you got a little thumb notch for the, whatever that reverse chest pull thing you're going to do uh, with it as you are bushcrafting. Yeah, you could use it for bushcraft, but really this to me is more of a menacing weapony kind of knife uh, i i like very much how the tip is below center line and you've got a long straight with a little bit of belly and an incredible incredibly acute point now like all off-grid knives um these things are absolute razor blades super thin behind the edge and very very good at utility cutting and i know you're probably not going to use your uh, Bowie knife for utility cutting, but you're going to use it for some kind of cutting. Say you got to cut through rope or leather or whatever. This thing is, it's good to go. I love this new knife and I got to be uh, frank and honest about it. I've been waiting for it for a while. I was like, man, this Cayman is just killer. They got to do something, something more with it. And they did. Uh, also just a brief mention, uh, in, in a box Carrie sent to me with, with those knives. He also sent this really cool bit driver. Look at that. Look at that. It's like a fidget spinner. You've got the off-grid logo on it, and you've got three spots for um, hex, or uh, I'm sorry, for um, bits, and you've got a great driver. So I'm really excited to have this. I, I've never had or considered owning a fancy bit driver, and now that I have one, how did I ever live without it? Oh, very excited about this. All right. Um, Next, this is a, a this is quite a turn from Off Grid Knives case. I got the case Stockman, the large Stockman at last in um, carbon steel. That's their chrome vanadium steel and uh, nice dyed bone. This, of course, has the the main clip point, has a really nice um, sheep's foot blade, and then in case I have to do in the field surgery. Uh, we've got a spay blade, which to me always look like scalpels, uh, scalpel blades. So just a great knife. Very psyched about this. Uh, I've always wanted a large stockman from case and, um, never had one. Also, I got this and I got this right before I left on my trip and I brought this with me. Uh, this is a case Barlow and the case Barlow was taken out of the vault two years ago and put into production for that year. And, um, and then they went away and they were hard to find. And I've always kind of always wanted a case Barlow. Um, and then I found this one. And so I snatched it up. And then I realized through doing some more research and reading that they're adding this to their full lineup. So I, I, I got this as if it were a real find, but it turns out that it wasn't because I think they're going to be making Barlow's regularly. But um, nonetheless, I've, I really like it. It's been to Deutschland with me. It has a half stop, unlike, unlike uh, many case knives. I find that the only case knives that have half stops are the ones that Tony Bowes designed. Uh, the back pocket, the um, sway back jack, etc. Uh, so, yeah, very happy to have this case Barlow in barn door um, purple bone. I love bone handles. Love bone handles. All right. Last up in uh, state of the collection, I got to show you this. This is from Auxiliary Manufacturing. Um, Michael Jarvis sent this out to me and he sent a bunch out to others uh, to show these off. He's about to drop these on the 8th. What's the date today? It's on the 8th. They're dropping, he is dropping these. Uh, sweet little pocket daggers here there's that there's the card uh, i'm sorry i said pocket dagger i meant pocket bowie a e b l this is a uh, oh and then a cool little cool little patch there but let me show you the knife just a beautiful little recurve nice slab of steel this is no shrinking violet uh feels great in hand you've got a traditional coffin style handle on a little micro bowie which i love i love that uh 
not only is it very, very comfortable and ergonomic, that style of handle, that coffin style, but it's also evocative of the original Bowie designs, which uh, Michael is referencing here. Uh, I think that this will make a great EDC fixed blade uh, for anyone who likes who likes to carry EDC fixed blades. How do I know that? I know that because the dagger that he made is spectacular. So I have no doubt that carrying this will be great. I have not carried this. This is on loan from the maker, and uh, I don't want to foul it before it goes out to its permanent home. Uh, but man, it feels great. It locks in the hand. For me, it's a three. It's a, it's a pretty much a full four finger knife. But I can see how for larger guys with bigger hands, it's going to be a three finger, uh, three finger knife. But it's got good width, and uh, it's got a good heft, so it'll be an easy knife to control. The beautiful, beautiful pocket Bowie from Auxiliary Manufacturing. Keep your eyes peeled on uh, auxiliary manufacturing's uh, instagram and also their website for december 8th they drop people you don't want to be late to the party like i always am and get yourself an auxiliary manufacturing uh, pocket bowie or anything else he makes they're all cool uh even his kitchen knives which i think are a rare bird at this point all right now that I've wasted, not wasted, now that I've burned a lot of time on everything else, let me get to my Civivi Senkut collection. I wanted to bring this up because my good friend Jaime from around the way just gave me this. He's a great guy who um, has recently got into knives. I have no idea how. Just kidding. Um, it was through my influence. <laughs> and he really has taken to Civivi, Civivis and Senkuts. And I went over there the other day to pick something up and he, showed me this Senkut Fantera, and then he gave it to me. This beautiful knife, he just gave it to me, a totally unexpected, and I was so psyched because I've been really interested in this one since it came out because of its uh, similarity to the Praxis, which I love, and we're going to show that in a second. But this is just a big, broad knife. Uh, it is an incredible slicer. I've been carrying it on me the last three days, and it's an incredible slicer. Uh, this is 9CR18 MOV, and you've got that nice wood handle, Kuru handle. Can't remember what kind of wood it is, but it begins with a C. And it's very handsome and beautiful, I think, next to that black blade. Um, so I wanted to I wanted to show off everything I've had by Civivi because I I wasn't intending on building a Civivi Sen Cut collection. If anything, I would say, oh, I, I should get more Wii's. But the Wii's don't do it for me. These do it for me. Um, so this send cut is tremendous. Now let me show this off with the next one. This is the Civivi Praxis. Oh no, I got a little snail trailing in the wood. Civivi Praxis. This is one of the first three knives they came out with. When Civivi first dropped years ago, they came out with three blades and this was one of them. And I remember... It had gold liners, and I was like, ah, why the gold liners? I, I would have been in. They quickly took care of that, got rid of the colored liners that had blue and gold and other cheesy-looking things, and but kept the blades. And still, this Praxis is still one of their best sellers, even, even this far out. Uh, these two I like very much because of that black and wood. I think they look gorgeous together. Uh, Civivi, man, they really know what they're doing. All right, next up is the Asticus. The Asticus was a was a Christmas gift uh, three years ago now from my awesome brother in law James. He's he goes by Candyman One Hundred One. Every once in a while, you'll see him in comments on Thursday Night Knives. It's a nickname he got in the Marine Corps. Uh, he is a, a great guy, a gentle beast. Um, but I wouldn't want to get on his bad side, that's for sure. Uh, so this is D2, fully deeply hollow ground, uh, also a four-inch blade. I love the larger knives, as you know, and I, I really dig that Civivi and CJRB and other companies aren't afraid of going to four inches or maybe even just beyond. Um, so this uh, this was a real... Uh, he was he was zoning in on my brain waves with this one because I I wanted the Asticus the moment it dropped. 
funny name though. I, I can't get over the name. I got an ass to kiss. Do you have an ass to kiss? I'm sure we all have ass to kisses. All right. So next up is the Keen Natter. Just a goofy name. Uh, I'm sure it's like a snake or something. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it means something. But anyway, this one was a gift from Dave. This old sword blade reviews. You know, he sends a lot of knives over here that we give away. But every once in a while, he'll send me one and say, this one's for you. And this was one of those. Uh, I think I had been waxing poetic about the beauty and um, and uh, utility of a recurve Tonto. And he heard heard that and <laughs> sent this to me. Uh, such a beautiful knife. I love that it's got a very deep hollow on the recurve portion and then a flat ground front. So very robust at the tip. But if you need to get uh, uh, nuanced with the cutting on the on the on the main edge, you've got it. Uh, really nice micarta on this one that has taken on my patina. You got a flipper. You got a thumb stud. And you got that fuller. So the Keen Natter, beautiful knife. Uh, this this one is brand new and was sent to me by Savivi, which is, I love that. Send me more, Savivi. I'll, I'll, I'll do your bidding. I love these knives. Oh, that sounded awful. Uh, but <clears throat> here we go. The Brazen is an older model that they resurrected with a button lock. And uh, Savivi, Sencut, haven't experienced we, but Savivi and Sencut make really good button locks albeit with a little bit of stick. they All the ones I've experienced have a little bit of stick. Here, listen. Maybe you can hear it. Just give way. Just a little bit. But you know what? In the old days, lock stick was considered um, desirable because it meant you were really, really actually locked up. Uh, I, I remember hearing... Um, Rick Hinderer say something about that, or maybe it was the guys from Strider saying that they like lock stick because they mean it means that the knife is definitely not going to close. Um, but you know, chances are you're not using the spine of your knife for much, so you can be uh, you can be cutting against that stop pin and against the lock confidently without worrying about it folding on you. Uh, but this one has just a really nicely uh, done flat ground blade on both portions and really nice action and if you ask me i'd say the black and green look great together speaking of green here is the hadros this is one you don't hear too much about uh i don't know if they even make this one anymore this is the dylan mallory design dylan mallory designed some really cool knives i'm especially fond of his worn cliffy uh, designs like this one nice deep hollow grind very thin behind the edge and kind of a dainty tip uh, i feel like it's a miracle i haven't dropped this one on its tip very uh thin handle that allows allows the handle to bury itself deeply in the hand um, you can really make a fist around this one no problem i've always contended that this one would be a great uh, Pical style in a pinch uh, fighting knife if you needed it uh, because you have that reach with the long tapered worn cliff. You've got the very thin behind the edge sliciness about it. And then you have the thin handle, which even though it's um, got this slope to it, it's gentle enough and thin enough that you can reorient this knife in pretty much any way and it'll still feel comfortable. So VV Hadros. Next up is the Cinesis. This one you never hear of. I just kind of happened upon it, and I loved the clip point. And uh, I liked that it was a steel uh, frame lock. I don't know why. Uh, doesn't matter how thin that steel is. It still feels heavier than titanium, but uh, nice nonetheless. I think that this one uh, really appealed to me because of that upswept uh, spine approaching the clip similar to the off-grid cayman xxl bowie i was showing before um and then this we see also in the sen cut waxahashi which i'll show you in a minute uh so what i'm saying is is i like sen cut savivi's uh bowie uh and clip point designs this one keeps the tip below center line or right in line with that pivot so you can still use it for your utility cuts and such 
without having to get too far around that belly. You got a nice choil there and um and uh what do you call that? Burlap micarta. Excellent action on all of these. Probably goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Next up, the Sencut Bronte. Uh, this is going to be a joke. There we go. I was able to open it left-handed. This one has definitely broken in. This was not a very smooth knife when I first got it, this front flipper, which is an anomaly for Civivi and Sencut. Their stuff is usually just uh, uncannily smooth. This was not, uh, but it has become so. Um, you got... You've got a fuller here. You've got a front flipper. And, uh, sorry. And you've got my left hand. Uh, but just a really nice looking um, modified worn cliff, I'm going to call it. Uh, you've got a concave surface here, which makes the tip so acute. Uh, it's nice and thin behind the edge, as expected. 9CR blasted finish with that great titanium. This one, well, it's getting stiff as I speak. Okay, there we go. You can open it up in the various different ways. Um, but like I said, this one has never been, and look, it's not dropping shut. Whereas uh, this is one of those knives. I, I just feel like it, um, sometimes it's super smooth and other times it's not. Like right now it feels real stiff. Uh, you can see how uh, the micarta, really nice micarta has taken on my patina a little bit. Uh, this knife can be used in any grip because it is 100% neutral in handle design. Okay, next up, this one. Oh, I love this one. This is the, whoops, this is the Sentinel Strike. Very modern looking. You've got a uh, an integrated, integral uh, back strap here. It's one piece of FRN that spans the spine of this aluminum frame. You've got the really nice button lock action, which uh, because this was a coated blade was not as smooth when I first got it, but uh, flipping it a billion times, it's gotten really nice and smooth. You've got many different ways to open this flipper, either thumb stud, uh, opening hole, lock itself, uh, so yeah, pretty much any way you want to open this thing, you're good to go. It is a very thin and slicey blade, but also aggressive. I love that aggressive looking tip. And I like the modern feel of the knife. The Sentinel Strike comes in a variety of colors. This to me is definitely the most tasteful of all of them. All right. Last of the folders is this big boy. This is the Synergy 4, designed by Jim O. Young way back in the day and resuscitated by We and then Civivi um, in the last couple of years. I love this design. Uh, very comfortable in hand and uh, very ergonomic, uh, but also ergonomic in a way that allows you to reorient your grip without too much um, overcommitment from choils and swoops and peaks and all that stuff. So nicely rounded off kind of handle uh, profile. And then look at that blade, a beautifully upswept, uh, dramatic tanto with a belly and a nice forward straight portion. And that tip, even though it's a trailing knife, uh, trailing point, the tip is not too far above the pivot uh, because of the, the initial downward arcing of that knife. Thin, slicey, super sharp. Uh, what is this? Uh, steel? I don't, I don't even know. I don't have my magnifying glass, but uh, I think it's uh, D2 or 9CR. Or, I, mean, I mean, no. It's either Nitro V or 14C. Um, okay, so that's a great knife and a real big one, kind of like uh, that one. Okay, two other knives that I love that are fixed blades from the same company here. Here's the Senkut waxahashi you've seen me show this one off quite a bit i love this blade uh this blade shape is what to me uh inspired me to get this synesis here um it's that up sweep of the of the spine to the clip but then the low positioned tip giving you all the utility cutting uh you want but a nice belly and 
and a point that you always know where it's going to be. Uh, the Waxahashi is very comfortable with the three lightning holes on the handle and the superb Kydex sheath. Um, I have it set up for uh, this one of the few knives I carry with these bands up front. They're a little bulky. I wouldn't mind getting a discrete carry concepts clip for that one. All right, last up in the list, also sent to me by Civivi um, and one of my favorite new production fixed blade knives. This is the Civivi Tomashi E, uh, designed by the great and powerful Bob Terzuola. Yeah, let's show his. There you can see his maker's mark, Bob Terzuola, on this beautiful, traditionally Japanese-inspired knife. I love this knife. Uh, Nitro V, you've got a sandwiched um, micarta handle. So you it's a full tang handle or a full tang knife, but you can't see the tang because uh, the micarta wraps all the way around the handle. So nice in hand and such a classic design. Great in that Filipino grip with the with the thumb on the blade there. Also great in a extended sort of saber grip there. Nice swedge for uh, making it great for penetration, giving it sort of a diamond-like profile right at the tip. And then that sweep, that belly and that sweep. Uh, this is beautiful, 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 but also really nice to carry. Uh, I was keeping this in my bag thinking it was too long. And then uh, one day at work, I tried putting this on because I didn't have a fixed blade on me. And it fits beautifully right here right in appendix grip you think it'd be too long but it's not I, i'm really a fan of this style of a new convert to that style of carrying and this knife with its slightly extended handle extended for um the kind of knives i like to carry um, really makes drawing it very very easy so there we have it ladies and gentlemen there is my civivi sen cut collection I wasn't intending on having a civivi sen cut uh, collection, but I just kept getting them and they're just so damn sweet. I don't want to get rid of them. So uh, this is where I am. Who knows? Maybe this collection grows more and more. Uh, well, just stay tuned and you'll find out. I'm sure it will. And I'm sure I'll blab all about it. Thanks for joining me on my uh, look at Civivi Cut, but also all these other new knives I've gotten in. I uh, haven't done a midweek supplemental in a couple of weeks. We had that trip to Germany and uh and some other things get in the way and it's so good to be back and to tell you about what i got here and what's coming up all right uh be sure to join us tomorrow night for thursday night knives where we will trip the light fantastic and just talk knives all evening with you glamorous folks and then join us on sunday for a great conversation with a great and luminary knife person all right, that's it. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast